all right guys remember this spreadsheet that we were looking at from some time ago in the course where we were using spreadsheets to help us to problem solve because it is indeed a spreadsheet spreadsheet is a problem solving tool we use it for the payroll the tax return grades a whole host of calculations for banking present value future value a whole heap of stuff right so a spreadsheet is a problem solving tool and the reason I'm using this is for the main fact that many times students do use spreadsheets while doing their SBEs and many times if you notice the problem solving section, writing the algorithms and the code does involve a lot of the skills you are using from the spreadsheet. So basic, reasonable um, levels of reasoning would assume that if you are doing a calculation or solving a problem using a spreadsheet and then you're going to write a program to solve the same problem, both spreadsheet and the program should give you the same answers, even mm -hmm. though they are using different calculations. So let's see how we can use a spreadsheet now to help us solve the problem. If you notice, I'm, I'm a basically assuming that you're acquainted with spreadsheets somewhat because you are now writing programs or algorithms so you should have gone through spreadsheets already I imagine. So it's a spreadsheet and we have a formula bar up here. So as we click on the different cells you realize that it simply shows you the number in the formula bar except when you click on those areas where formulas were entered it gives you an idea of the formula you use to derive the answers in those columns. So let us use the labels, gadget, cost, quantity, subtotal, discount, tax, price, all of those as variable names. Let's use the headings up here as variable names. And the calculation in the column as the means by which we would derive the answer for the calculation of those variables where the calculations are necessary. So for example, subtotal here. The calculation for subtotal would be cost times quantity. How do we know that? Because here's a formula that, formula that says equal B2 equal B2 times C2. So you're multiplying the B2 here by C2 here. But those two are related to cost and quantity respectively. Let us see how well this works by writing an algorithm to do this calculation Enter the same values here, 550 and 3, and let us see if we get the same answers over here. Alright, let's see what happens with this. Let us close this a bit, and then move this spreadsheet out the way. Alright, now let's get to work. Let's prepare some variables. Let us say we say dim gadget as a string. And we also say um, dim price or price. We started off with cost first. It was cost we're working with first. Cost, yes. Cost, subtotal, discount, tax price. So we say dim cost. Oh, I think that's around the wrong one. So it's cost. Let's call it subtotal. Sub tot. Right? Cutting the very short a bit. Sub tot and let's say the discount tax price. Remember we said that we have to declare um, real numbers as single some time ago in some previous video because this program does not accept real. Remember we're just kind of giving an idea of how of what you should be thinking about when you're writing algorithms because you can't really execute algorithms. So by the fact that we're executing this, mean that it's not exactly algorithm but it's close enough to give us an idea of what to expect. So we declare these as simple. That's the variable we have to use for now. And our data type of this for now and then we say dim quantity as integer. We declare cost some total discount tax price and so on as single 
which should be which should be real because you have dollars and cents which automatically indicates that you have decimal positions or decimal points. Once you have decimal points in a number, the the variable to accept that data must be declared as real because real numbers are floating point numbers, which means the decimal numbers. They also include whole numbers as well. Alright? So let's get to work. So let's get some user input here. Let's put some space here. Let's print. What do you wish to purchase? I right, say input gadget. And it's important that we spell the variables the exact way we declare them because it's not going to have problems with our program. I say we say print. What is the cost of, of the gadget? And then we say input cost. Next we go again print. How many do you wish to purchase? And then say input QTY, which is quantity. Now let's start the calculation. Now that we accepted all this data, which one could say, looking at IPO chart as well, all of this here is what we would consider to be the input section of our IPO chart. What we're going to do now is to write what will be considered to be the process section because we're going to do some calculations now. So now we see subtot subtot equals and we know what subtot equals to because here we say subtot equals the price or the cost times the quantity so the subtot equals cost times qty then our next step our next step is to calculate discount because after the subtotal, our next one was discount. And discount had said um, is the subtotal times 5%. So now we go next. So we say disc. Let's show on that as well. Discount. Put this for discount as a subtot. And then now tax would, would have been equal to. Let us see what tax was equal to. Again. Just in case we have forgotten. We said tax was equal to the subtotal. Then you subtract the discount. So the amount of the discount, whatever that figure is, because they put that in brackets, telling the computer, yeah, guess what? Subtract the discount first. And after you subtract the discount, then you apply 16.5% of that figure. That will be our tax. So our tax now says going to be uh, subtotal subtot minus discount. Let me close the bracket here. Multiplied by 16 plus 15. 16.5%. Hmm. Why am I getting that error here? 16.5%. You know what? Let me save myself some trouble and convert this to decimal to be 0 0.165. Maybe the percentage time giving some problems here for some reason, which I don't know why. Let me begin the six and I'm convert to the small as well. 0 0.05. Just in case I encounter any difficulty. And then now the actual price of the item we expect to pay is equal to 
Compton minus discount plus tax. We should get the same price or the same figure as we've done the spreadsheet if we put the same figures in. So let us do this in our print price. All we want to check for is to see if our algorithm is working properly. And let no, let me just execute it. I think we are correct here. Everything is should as it should be. So let's start. And I'll bring the execution screen back here so you guys can see exactly what's happening. Alright. Good. What do you wish to purchase? Let's see. What do you say? I want to purchase again? Phone. Smartphone was the first one. Let's say phone. The price. The cost was $5.50. And we wish to purchase three of them. Now we see here that the cost that is being displayed here that we should pay is $1,826. And well, some rounding would have to be here. 0 0.137. Let us see what we have here. We have, well, apparently there's an error here. 550 and 3. I'm figuring out there's something up with these percentages. Let's check and see what's going on. Uh, sub tot cost time quantity sub tot. Hmm. Yeah, see what we have. So total that's correct. Discount is five percent. Tax is sixteen point five. And this says subtotal. Oh we had done this calculation incorrectly. This should have been Minus the discount. Let me put this one again. Let me delete this one. Delete this. Equal subtotal minus discount plus tax. 18.26.14. And let's run this again and see how we get that sound familiar. Similar to what we got before, let's start. So this spreadsheet has a slight error there. Um, the object is, let's say, phone. The cost of the gadget is five fifty. We bought three. Eighteen point two six. Point rounding is off. That sounds exactly like what we should have. Alright, so we see that we did get the same answer exactly as it is in the spreadsheet. So this gives us, gives us a feel of the fact that our algorithms can actually represent what we have been doing in our spreadsheet, and this is primarily useful for when you're doing your SDAs. Alright, glad I'm even glad we had that little difficulty there, so we could do some troubleshooting, some rudimentary debugging to see and find and fix our errors. Alright. Have a good evening, guys.